Before Paul George be shipped to the LA Clippers, teaming up with recently acquired free agent Kawhi Leonard. Who, who can he get that, that want to go to the Clippers? Paul George never registered on my radar for the simple fact Skippy had just signed a four-year deal last year. Before Paul George would become the highest NBA draft pick from Fresno State in their history. With the 10th pick in the 2010 NBA draft, the Indiana Pacers select Paul George of Fresno State University. Before Paul George would be on the cover of NBA 2K17. What am I doing? What did I just... I can't tell you what you should do with your team. <laughs> I just hope you do the right thing with your team. Paul George is a six-time NBA All-Star, five-time All-NBA Team selection, and four-time member of the NBA All-Defensive Team. Over the span of his nine-year NBA career, he's played for the Indiana Pacers, Oklahoma City Thunder, and soon, the LA Clippers. After a gruesome leg injury would keep George out for almost the entire 2014-2015 season that would have many questioning whether or not the All-Star would ever fully recover, Paul George was quick to prove the naysayers wrong. We're here to tell you guys all about his rise to becoming one of the NBA's top players who covered NBA 2K17 and shocked the NBA world when news broke he's heading to LA to team up with Kawhi Leonard here for you on Before They're Famous. What's going on guys, Jared Bronstein here and today we're covering one of the Clippers latest accusations, Paul George here for you on Before They're Famous. Now we've done a ton of videos on basketball players as I'm sure many of you guys know, most recently covering some of the top draft picks from this year's past draft. Be sure to check those out and as always let us know in the comments right down below who you'd like to see next. Now as always we do start our videos with a trivia question that I'll answer at the end of this video. So for today I want to know what two schools did Paul George commit to then decommit to before ultimately going to Fresno State and I'll see you after the intro. Before they were famous. Before they were, before fam before they were famous about. <gasps> that was a pretty good video. I like this guy does. Look ready, cool. you did a great Michael job. is never wrong. So damn, that was cool. How did he know that? Bro. Paul Clifton Anthony George was born on May 2nd, 1990 in Palmdale, California. He is the son of Paul George Sr. and Paulette George. Hmm. I wonder where he got his name from. George also has two older sisters, his eldest sister Portala George, who graduated from California State University, San Bernardino, where she played volleyball, and Teosha George, who played for the Pepperdine University basketball team, where she would eventually graduate as well. Paul Sr. would work at a rim shop and as a carpenter while his three kids were growing up. George's mother would suffer a stroke when Paul was just six or seven years old due to two blood clots. While in hospital, she would be declared dead twice before being revived, which would eventually lead her being a stay at home parent after half of her body was paralyzed. George credits his family's past for his current work ethic, telling Bleacher Report, I quote, My dad was spending so much time at work to where being a star and making it, that's where the motivation came from. I want to do it for them. I want to make life easier on them. I had a dream of like being an all star, being, you know, a gold medalist. Like everything that I've accomplished is is the future I saw for myself. From a young age, George would have an interest in basketball, playing mostly at the park or against his older sister, Teosha. Although he wouldn't play organized basketball until his high school days, George would play a game at the local YMCA, where he would cut his jeans into shorts during his first game ever, prompting his sisters to laugh at him from the sidelines. Although he said it was a little awkward, he didn't have a huge problem with it, he just wanted to play the game he loved. Growing up in Palmdale, just an hour north of LA, George would cheer for the Lakers and Clippers, and cites Kobe Bryant Tracy McGrady and Penny Hardaway as his influences growing up. Uh, it was probably my top three guys that I looked up to growing up and um, I wanted to relate to. As previously mentioned, Paul's sister, Teosha, was also a basketball player, which would have Paul living in his sister's shadow for much of his youth. Due to the fact that George wouldn't play an organized basketball game before his freshman year in high school, his sister was his main competition. This would result in many tears for a much younger, smaller Paul, who would always have a hard time beating his sister in their friendly, yet competitive games of one-on-one. -on -one. However, all this training would eventually prepare George to play basketball at night high school for the Nighthawks. As kids, Teosha and I, you could say, had a friendly rivalry. She was bigger, taller, and a better shooter than I was, but I was determined. He would join the varsity team during his sophomore season, but wouldn't really grow into a star until his senior year. Knights head coach Tom Heger, which I probably just said wrong, remembers George showed up to high school as a six foot lanky kid, but his sister's reputation gave him potential. At age 16, George would be playing with his AAU team, shooting hoops with future NBA players Drew Holiday and Clay Thompson, which is when recruits would really start to notice him. In his junior year, George would be the only non-senior on the team starting five, averaging 14 points and eight rebounds per game. Playing with the 
older kids, George would have a pass first mentality, but all of this would change in his senior year. George remembers the team held a meeting before the start of the season, with his coach asking if players had any issue with Paul shooting 20 to 25 times per game. No one objected, with the team agreeing in order for the team to win, George should have the ball in his hands. Safe to say this is a big confidence boost for the senior in his final year of high school. The skills I really focused on um, was was how to learn how to be a leader. You know, uh, you know, a lot of times the young guys, you know, you don't want to step on toes or push any buttons. Unfortunately, being a late bloomer has its setbacks, which is why not too many schools thought to offer the future NBA star a scholarship. In fact, he wasn't even on ESPN's top 100 list of high school prospects, which included the likes of DeMar DeRozan, Kemba Walker, and Draymond Green to name a few. George would, however, still be named Golden League MVP, the Antelope Press Player of the Year, and was also a member of the Daily News 2007-2008 All-Area Boys Basketball Team. After receiving offers from Fresno State, Pepperdine, San Diego, Diego State, SMU, and Wyoming, and receiving some interest from Georgetown and Penn State, Paul George would accept his Fresno State offer. When asked why he chose Fresno, it's because he wanted to go where he would get to play and immediately make an impact. And he did exactly that, as you can clearly see here. See, I, I, I'm the contrarian, huh? George! By George. Wow! Paul George, the freshman from Lancaster, California. In his freshman year, the Bulldogs went 13 and 21, failing to qualify for the 2009 NCAA tournament. But George would still lead the WAC in minutes played and finish the season averaging 14.3 points, 6.2 rebounds, 1.9 assists, and 1.7 steals per game on 47% shooting from the field. In George's sophomore year and final year playing college ball, he would be named the most entertaining player in the West region and come in at number eight on Sports Illustrated's top 16 most entertaining players in college basketball. He would finish playing 29 games, missing four due to an ankle sprain, averaging 16.8 points, three assists, 7.2 rebounds, and 2.2 steals per game. Still, this wouldn't be enough to name George a top 10 projected draft pick. After announcing his decision to declare for the NBA draft on March 31st, 2010, analysts and experts predicted he'd be selected 12th overall by the Memphis Grizzlies. NBA Draft.net said, I quote, his athleticism and ability to run the floor make him dynamic in transition. Rebound well for a small forward, but biggest weakness is his inability to create for himself and his poor shooting percentage while pulling up off the dribble. DraftExpress.com pointed it out how George is similar to that of a young McGrady, but his high turnover percentage is the first thing that catches the eye when looking at his stats on paper. However, before the draft, an anonymous scout in the Eastern Conference was quoted saying, in five years, Paul George will be the best player to come out of this draft. And talk about three days, man, before the draft, June 24th. What are you feeling right now? Ah, oh, a lot of things going in there, but uh, just put everything in God's hands and go from there. George would eventually be drafted 10th overall by the Indiana Pacers, behind the likes of first overall pick John Wall and fifth overall pick Demarcus Boogie Cousins. George would be the highest NBA draft pick to come out of Fresno State and would be the face of the Pacers franchise for years to come. George made his NBA debut on October 27th, 2010, against the San Antonio Spurs, playing a total of 23 minutes, putting up just four points, sinking one for five buckets. However, he would end his rookie campaign averaging 3.7 rebounds, one steal, and 7.8 points per game. He would also be only one of two rookies from the 2010 draft to play in the playoffs that year, the other being Landry Fields on the New York Knicks. He was also named to the 2011 All-Rookie second team. In his sophomore year, George would have a bit of a slump, but would still average 5.6 rebounds, 12.1 points, and 2.4 assists per game. But in his third season, he would be moved from small forward to shooting guard after Danny Granger would miss almost the entire season due to injury. This change in position would lead to George breaking Reggie Miller's record of having the most three-pointers in a game for the franchise, with George totaling nine. He would also be named to the 2013 NBA All-Star Game and post career highs of 17.4 points, 7.6 rebounds and 4.1 assists. He would go on to win NBA Most Improved Player and eventually get a contract extension as the Pacers designated player signed in a five year $90 million contract or in that ballpark range. I was supposed to have a poker face throughout this whole situation, but you know, my heart was really here and I couldn't really see myself going anywhere else. Around this time, the young NBA star was reportedly dating LA Clippers current head coach Doc Rivers' daughter, Callie Rivers. The two would eventually split up after rumors that George hooked up and impregnated Daniela Radjic, a former dancer who claimed her baby girl, Olivia, was Paul's daughter. After a paternity suit and confirmation it was George's kid, the two agreed to joint custody and a financial package. The two would eventually start seeing each other on a regular basis, and Daniela would give birth to their second child in February of 2018, Natasha. Now back to basketball talks. In 2014, George would be named to the training camp roster for Team USA, representing the country at the 2004 FIBA Basketball World Cup in Spain. Or maybe it's FIBA. I think it's FIBA. It's like FIFA, you don't say FIFA. 
But you say like the W, I don't know, whatever. Considered a lock to make the team, many were excited to see George play overseas, but unfortunately during a scrimmage in Las Vegas with the team, George awkwardly landed on his foot, suffering a compound fracture of both bones in his right leg. The video is too gruesome to show, but feel free to look it up. I will warn you guys, it is very graphic. Although many speculated George would be out for the entire 2014-2015 season, he would return to play in the final six games of the season. I looked down to, see, to look at my legs and I saw my bone. Um, and the second I saw my bone, I just I lost it. I just laid flat. In Georgia's comeback season, he would once again help the team reach the playoffs and would also make the all-star team with the Eastern Conference. Coming off such a horrific injury, many weren't sure how or if George could bounce back, but he came back better than ever. George would also join the US national team for the 2016 Rio Olympics, which they would go on to win gold. His next season with the Pacers would be his last. After being swept by LeBron's Cavaliers, who would eventually make it to the finals, George would be traded to the Oklahoma City Thunder in exchange for Victor Alapto and Domantas Sobonis in the offseason. And I feel like I definitely said his name wrong. Although George only had one year left in his contract and stated how he'd want to go play for his hometown of LA, the Thunder took their chance on him. George would go on to make an immediate impact, playing with Russell Westbrook and averaging just under 22 points per game, 3.3 assists and 2 steals in his first season with the Thunder. Heading into the offseason, George was expected to test free agency or just go to an LA team before he announced he would want to stay in Oklahoma. On July 6, 2018, George re-signed with the Thunder on a 4 year $137 million deal. In the 2018-2019 season, George would have a career high average of 2.2 steals per game and average 28 points per game as well. However, on July 6, 2019, it was reported by ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski that the Thunder had traded George to the LA Clippers in exchange for Shea Gilgis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari, four unprotected first round picks, one protected first rounder, and two pick swaps. Jeez. Talk about a blockbuster. This trade would be believed to be the reason why Kawhi Leonard would also end up signing with the Clippers as well. Paul George just got traded to the Clippers, and then he followed that with, and Kawhi is going there too, and I was like, that's, that's not true. <laughs> I didn't believe it. I was in a pool, and I got out the pool and walked over there like, let me see. I All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up, but before we do that, I gotta answer our trivia question, and that question was, what two schools did Paul George commit to before decommitting and ended up at Fresno? Well, George would first verbally commit to Santa Clara, the first school to offer him a scholarship, before decommitting after his high school coach recommended he kept his options open. George would then commit to Pepperdine, where his sister went to school, after attending Tiosha's Midnight Madness event. Halfway through his senior year, he would decommit to Pepperdine after hearing news that their basketball coach had resigned. Ultimately, as you guys know, he would end up choosing Fresno State as his school. Now, with the Lakers and Clippers as the two favorites to win the NBA title next year, I want to know. Who do you guys got winning? LeBron's Lakers or Paul's Clippers? Or maybe James Harden's Rockets? Who knows? You guys gotta let me know in the comments right down below. That's it for this one. I'm your host, Jared Bronstein, and as always, you guys gotta be sure to let us know who you wanna see next in the comments down below. Maybe another player, maybe Boogie, I don't know. You guys gotta let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe so you guys never miss a video on your favorite athletes, rappers, celebrities. Follow me on social media at Bron7, and feel free to DM me any of your suggestions as well. I'll see you guys in the next video.